Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome back. Today, we are going to be looking at PyTorch and using PyTorch with GPU to speed up matrix multiplication. Now, you don't actually need a GPU physically to follow along with this tutorial. You can head over to collab.research.google.com and you'll have access to their free GPU tiers, which is exactly what I'm using here. And then you can follow along with this tutorial. So what you'll notice when you first start up a research notebook on Google Collab is you have access to your runtime environment. You're going to see in the upper right hand corner, you'll have a little, little bar representing your RAM and disk space. And what you're going to want to do is click on that and you're going to see that you can change the runtime type at the bottom of this little panel here. It's just off screen, but bear with me. You'll get this little window here and you're going to be able to select a hardware accelerator. We don't, we don't want none. We want GPU. So we're going to go ahead and select GPU. You'll notice that we could purchase additional compute units here. We're not going to do that. We're just, we're just going to use the free GPU tier that they're giving us access to. You can go ahead and hit save and then it is going to allocate those resources to you. If you get a message like this saying that you have too many active sessions, you can go ahead and manage your sessions and then you can kill any active sessions that you need to. Um, but otherwise, you should be all set up and running with a new kernel that has access to GPU. To double check that you're set up correctly, you'll notice when you click on that little RAM and disk bar again, you'll have a GPU RAM section. So that means we have successfully allocated some resources to ourselves so that we can use them in our Python kernel. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. We're going to look and see how we can speed up matrix multiplication using this notion of parallelization and GPU. Now, of course, you follow me on my blog medium, so I don't have to tell you what parallelization is or how it works, because I'm sure you've read my wonderful article on randomized singular value decomposition. If you haven't, I would definitely recommend checking it out. Uh, otherwise, I will offer a quick refresher to those who are unfamiliar with the idea of, of parallelization. So let's consider that you have a bag of marbles. And I said, hey, I want you to count this bag of marbles as, as quickly as you can. And you know, you could sit there and you can you can count out the marbles and you know, maybe there's like 300 marbles and it takes you it takes you a while to count those. Maybe you could do three marbles per second. Um, it, it's still gonna take you a while. How could you go about counting that bag of marbles faster? Well, one solution to help you increase the speed in which you count those marbles is to invite a friend over and split up the marbles right at the beginning, have them count about half of them, have you count about the other half, and then sum the totals at the end and you'll have the exact total number of marbles in that bag. And that is essentially the idea of parallelization. What we're doing is we're allocating these tasks to different cores, having them execute at the same time as one another, and then eventually reconvene to that total sum of marbles that we're looking for. It should be noted that this is very effective with vectorized operations, but it is not very effective with loops and other structures that are similar to loops. So when possible, you're always going to want to try to vectorize your code because then you can take advantage of parallelization and this idea of just projecting and pushing memory to the GPU, having it allocate to different cores, compute, and then pulling from GPU. But not everything is parallelizable, so keep that in mind when you're going through and you're, you're thinking about the structure of your code and time complexity and things like that. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to digress from that because that is a slippery slope and a rabbit hole that we could spend a long time uh, exploring. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at an example. Let's see if we can speed up some matrix multiplication. So I'm going to start by importing PyTorch. I'm going to say import torch, and I'm also going to import time, and that's going to allow us to time the execution of these matrix products. All right. So for starters, I'm going to generate a random matrix. I'm going to say X is equal to torch.normal. And I'm just going to generate a standard normal matrix. So I'm going to do 0, 1. And the shape of the matrix is going to be 10,000 by 10,000. So now we have effectively generated a matrix of draws from a standard normal distribution. It is 10,000 by 10,000, which is a pretty large matrix to do a matrix product with. And what we're going to do now is we are going to take the same matrix 
and we're going to push it to GPU. So what I'm gonna do is in this cell, I'm gonna say y is equal to x.2 CUDA. And what we're doing here is we're creating a new variable y that's taking that matrix x of draws from a standard normal distribution and it's pushing it to the GPU space. So we can't actually interact x and y. x exists in CPU, y exists in GPU. So always keep this in mind as well when you're working with GPU is like where where are my variables in memory and when are they where? So you can push and you can pull from GPU, but you need to make sure you have a, a good understanding of where everything is at, at the time of execution of whatever algorithm you're running. Let's just go ahead and time the execution of a simple matrix multiplication. So I'm gonna say T0 is equal to time dot time to get now. And then I'm gonna say X and then the matrix product with itself. And then I'm gonna say T1 is equal to time dot time. And then I will print the CPU mat molt time. And that's just going to be the difference of T1 minus T0. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this. And it is going to take a hot second. And I'm gonna actually pause the video here and wait for this to finish and then we'll, we'll resume. That took 23 seconds in CPU to compute that matrix product. Let's see what the speed up is when we go over to GPU. So to do this, what I'm gonna do is create a new cell and I'm gonna say T2 is equal to time.time .time, and then Y matrix product of Y, then T3 is equal to time.time. .time. But we actually need to include something else here. So we can't just execute this code because what's gonna end up happening is it's going to start the timer at T2, it's going to execute the matrix product, and it's going to let that operation run in GPU and just keep going linearly with the code as if that product is already complete. So the time difference is gonna be really, 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 really small. It's not gonna actually reflect the amount of time that it took GPU to compute that matrix product. To get the true time, that the matrix product of Y with Y takes to compute, we can do a torch.cuda.synchronize. And what this is going to do is it's going to make the threads sync up before continuing with the flow of execution. So before we get to that T3, we're gonna wait for the GPU to finish computing that matrix product. Now we can just go ahead and print GPU map molt time and that will be T3 minus T2. And if we go ahead and run this, this takes three seconds. So this is almost 10 times faster than CPU matrix multiplication with this particular matrix. Okay, so why should we care about this speed up in matrix multiplication? Well, think about how much is matrix multiplication? All of deep learning, pretty much every aspect of it is a vectorized operation. Literally, a neural network is a series of composite functions where you have a linear transformation, so some weight matrix being applied to another input matrix, and then you have a nonlinearity, and then this just iterates until you get an output, and you use backpropagation to adjust those weights to find an optimal value, but all of that can be paralyzed in GPU. So this is why it's so powerful because if you're going to build a neural network, you can just build it in PyTorch, push it straight to GPU and train it as you would any other model. It's gonna do this all automatically for you. Now there's no better way to illustrate the power of this than with an example. And what I have here is a notebook that I call the framework for natural language processing neural networks. I am heavily involved in the natural language processing space from my personal research. And this framework is actually made available through Medium. I have a post where I discuss the acceleration of neural networks in PyTorch using GPU. And this entire project and all of its code is available through that article. So I will once again link that as well. So if you're interested in replicating this, you, you certainly can. But essentially what we have here is what I, what I said is a framework for natural language processing neural networks. This is going to be a model to learn how to classify movie reviews. 
So we start by downloading the data, we have our pre-processing and cleaning, we have our ground truths. Eventually I develop this document term matrix. I skip the dimensionality reduction and then here is where I define the neural network classifier. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be doing a train test split on the data. So I have the doc term matrix with all of the documents and all of the categories, the true categories that those movie reviews belong to. And I'm splitting them up into a training and a test set. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to build this neural network in PyTorch. So these are my hyperparameters and this is my neural network. And you can see that I'm using a sigmoid activation function. So the probability that it belongs to the positive class is what that represents between zero and one. So the higher the probability, the more likely it is to be positive. I am using a binary cross entropy loss function and stochastic gradient descent. Here, what I'm doing is I'm converting those train test split arrays into torch tensors. And here, I'm going to actually train this neural network classifier. So this is all being done on CPU. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run this, and I just want you to get an idea of how slow this is in CPU. So that was one pass, this is another pass, and so on and so forth. You can see the error is slowly, <laughs> very slowly, decreasing. And this is exactly what we're, we're aiming to do with backpropagation, but clearly this speed is not appropriate. We need something that is much more effective at converging to our optimal solution so that we can go about tuning our model hyperparameters. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to implement this exact same neural network framework, this, this exact same structure in GPU, and we're going to see how fast it can compute these 10 iterations of stochastic gradient descent. Okay, so here is the exact same model. The only difference is I'm going to be pushing everything to GPU. So we have the same hyperparameters, we have the same train test split. The only difference is right here I'm doing a dot two CUDA. So I'm pushing this sequential neural network model to GPU. I'm also doing the same thing with the binary cross entropy loss function. So I'm going to push that to GPU and the same thing with our tensors. Now let's see how long it takes to compute 10 iterations of this algorithm. Yeah, it's almost instant. And it's actually shocking that with the free GPU tier, we, we, can, we can execute algorithms like this. So hopefully this gives you an idea of how helpful pushing things to GPU can be in terms of optimizing your neural networks in terms of training your neural networks and in terms of really anything that involves a vectorized operation. I wanna thank you so much for watching this video on building neural networks with PyTorch and using GPU to aid in the training and model development process. If you have any questions, you can always feel free to leave those in the comments or you can shoot me an email that's roman at quantgill.com. Definitely check out my medium. You can check out the article on randomized singular value decomposition and the article on this project if you'd like to replicate it. Also, if you're interested in learning Python from me from scratch, you can check out quantgill.com. Head over to Introduction to Python and we're gonna take you from zero to hero in the Python programming language, all in a financial setting. So everything's gonna have an immediate application, cutting out all the bloat from my years of experience as a Python developer. And that's all I got for you today. Once again, thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.